When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Ever heard of a money date? It is the best way to stay on top of your money every single week without all the stress and anxiety that money typically brings. Find out more in this episode of Shauna Shear's Sunday Community Q&A. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur, Shauna Come to Game where we flip the script on the old school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories, trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna. Money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. Welcome to Millennial Money. I am Shauna, and I'm so excited to welcome you to this brand spanking new weekly (laughs) episode series called Shauna Shares, where I answer your burning money questions. Now, as you know, if you've been listening to this show for a while, we previously had Ask Shauna questions that were kind of the midpoint of each episode. However, since we have such a strong community here and you guys are just honestly awesome, we have a lot of questions. So I thought it would make sense to have a whole episode just dedicated to you. So don't stop the questions from coming in because these questions I think are so amazing and they really show how much we all are alike versus different. And that's so important when it comes to money because I don't know about you, but it's so easy to feel like you're siloed, like you're in this corner and everybody else has their money stuffed together and you're trying to figure everything out. Well, I just want you to know if that's how you're feeling, that is absolutely not true. All right. So don't stop the questions from coming in. You can head to the show notes and all you need to do is click the Ask Shauna button and it will take you to a questionnaire where you can fill in information about a question. You can ask a couple of questions. Maybe you have a success story you want to share. I I love hearing success stories. I love sharing them on the podcast because it's just awesome that you guys are listening and then you're taking things and like putting it into action. I love that you're doing that. So you can always also make any question anonymous. I'm totally fine with that. If you're not comfortable just saying your name, I'm always only going to say first name, so don't worry. (laughs) I'm not going to say your last name as well. I'm I'm very much a fan of confidentiality, but if you just don't want your name said at all, totally fine with that. Just let me know. It's not a big deal. It doesn't take away from your question. So today's episode is all about money dates. So let's dive in. Our Shauna Shear's question comes from Sherry. And Sherry says, Hi, Shauna. I'm a fan of the show and been listening since 2016. I finally worked up the courage to ask you a question. I just want to thank you for helping me so much on my money journey over the last few years. I've learned so much and I just feel so confident these days, even if I'm not exactly where I want to be with my money. I think the biggest thing I've learned is that my money is this evolution. 
I love this because I just feel like society wants me to believe that it has to all be perfect, and that's just not true. Anyway, I feel like I'm in the right mental space right now to start taking on money dates. I know you've talked about them a lot on the show before, but I just have a couple other questions. Can you give me some ideas of what I should be doing during these money dates? Because I set one on my calendar and I thought, I have no idea what I'm doing. (laughs) Thanks again. Really, I love that I have a place to come and be entertained and learn a ton about money and it actually helps make my life easier. Sherry, first of all, thank you so much for being a listener and a listener all the way back from 2016. You have definitely heard the evolution of this podcast, and we have evolved quite a bit since this show started in 2015. So thanks for just being on board and being with me since then. Really, really appreciate it. And this is a great question. And first off, I just want to say before I even get to your question, the idea of you talking about not being perfect with money, I just want to really overemphasize that because I think that's something... There are so many things with money that we just inherently know. We consciously are aware of it, but it's very different practically speaking. So even though we know that we're not supposed to be perfect with our money, you may feel like that's just constantly weighing on you. You may feel like you're not making the right decisions or you just don't know what to do. So you're just not going to do anything or you feel like you might be judged Particularly if you're in a relationship, you could feel like you might be judged if you do something that um, the other person might not think is, you know, a smart money step to take. And so it's really easy to feel like, just like you have to be perfect. And I love that you pointed out that that's not true because it actually isn't true. And I think if you ask anybody and someone is really going to be honest with you, they're going to tell you that, no, they haven't been perfect. And there's been so many different ebbs and flows with their money. Even somebody who's very, very wealthy and very, very successful will tell you that there are good times. And then there are times where things just aren't as fantastic. This is just life. Now, I realize that comparing anybody's situation to somebody that's wealthy is completely unfair because certainly if we're sitting with a ton of money and we make a mistake, maybe it's not as impactful as somebody who is really just out there. Maybe this is you and you're just trying to make ends meet every month. So I fully comprehend that there is a big, big difference between those two different scenarios. But the point I just want you to understand is that it's okay if you make a mistake. It's it's okay. You can rebound. And by listening to the show and whatever other research you're doing about money, my hope is that you're curating this toolkit of money advice and tips and strategies and all sorts of things that you can kind of come back to when something happens. All right. So let's get back to your question, Sherry, this idea about dating. We know that when we date Let's just take it as dating a person. It brings out the best in us. We're getting to know someone. We're seeing what you have in common, figuring out if your life's would align. You're kind of like, you know, sussing somebody out, right? You're, you're trying to figure out whether there's a match. And not all dates are going to be amazing and wonderful, but they can be fun and really a chance to show off your good parts. So I have to tell one dating story super quick if you if you allow me to do so. So after I got divorced, I went on Match.com and I had never done internet dating before. And <laughs> it was quite an experience. It was um, very, very interesting. And I had all of these rules and parameters set up of like who I would go out with and what kind of dates I would go on. And when I met Jeff, my current husband, I really broke all of those rules and guidelines. So, you know, it was it was very interesting that I did so, but I went on a date with this one guy and on paper, he seemed really perfect. And then when we met in person, I mean, just everything that he was interested in and his life and his demeanor and just everything about him. I don't want to give away too many details because I'm, I'm not, I don't want to judge here, of course, but let's just say we were not aligned. <laughs> This was not one of those people that came into my life where I thought, yes, I have to spend the rest of my life with you. 
this was someone where at the end of the date, we both kind of went like we waved goodbye and we knew that we would never see that person again. But generally speaking, dating is a fun practice. It's something that you do where you want to get dressed up and and you want to just bring out the best in yourself, right? So I want you to think about money dates sort of in the same way, right? It's almost like we need to court our money or we need to date our money or we need to hang out with our money. We just, we need to become friends with our money. And when you do that, I know this may seem like really corny, but when you do that, that is when things start to change. So why do money dates work? Good question. You know by now that money success is 80%, some say 90% mental, and the other 10 or 20% is just the know-how. It's knowing what to do with your money. Well, the money date is all about bringing these two forces together so you can work on the mental piece and then the practical financial piece together. And what we're trying to do, just like if we're dating, right, is we're trying to create the perfect partnership the perfect union. So it's the same thing with your money. You're trying to get this like winning combination of balancing your mindset, how you're thinking, acting, feeling about money, what's going on in your head, what are you believing, what are your values, all of these things that are swishing around in your head all day long, every day. You're trying to figure that piece out with your money and the goals you want to achieve and all of the other stuff in there. So this is where that idea of perfectionism can come in. If Even if we have all of the know-how and maybe we have our money set up systematically the way we want to, but our head might be telling us, wow, you really messed up. You messed up on this. You spent too much. You didn't pay this bill on time, whatever it might be. And so our brain, because it's so powerful with money, will override the strategy, the know-how with the money. And then we might get just stuck in this like terrible tornado kind of loop in our head of feeling really bad about our money. And then when you're, when you're looking at your money and you're trying to make good decisions, you can't make good decisions when you're stressed out. You can't make good decisions when you feel anxious or when you're in one of these just chronic sort of loops of I'm doing everything wrong and I don't know what I'm doing. I'm never going to never going to be successful whatever it might be, right? So we need to actually like pull ourselves out of that. And for me, I have to do that quite often. So every week I am definitely doing the mindset piece with the practical piece because the mindset is just so incredibly powerful. <music> Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. 
All right, so getting back to the mindset piece, we all have what I call a money story, and it's how your family talked about and dealt with money, how you feel about money, your beliefs, things that other people have told you about money. It's all in there, just swishing around in your head each and every day. So it's another reason why we have to just kind of counteract this, and the money date is a great way to to do this. So a great exercise to do is a little free writing exercise if you like to write or even if you don't like to write. I think this is a really great exercise to try. Take like 15 or 20 minutes. Don't belabor this. Don't take hours and hours. Just take a short period of time because honestly, that's as much as your brain can really focus on this stuff. And I want you to do what I call writing out your money story. So starting with how your parents or whoever raised you talked about money. Was it a good conversation? Was it bad conversations? Did your parents fight? Did they not fight? Do you ever remember them saying anything about money? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I want you to write out, right, what you remember. And then what was the feeling in your household about money? So just think back, are there things that happen? Are there moments you can pull out? Are there conversations? Was it just a feeling? Because sometimes there isn't a conversation and as a kid, you don't really remember what was said, but maybe you remember a feeling, how you felt. And then I want you to think about how can you see that echo in your life today? Do you feel a certain way about money? Do you act a certain way around money? Do you approach money in a certain way? Do you have certain habits or not have habits? Like what is your day-to-day kind of feeling about money, but also practicality around money? Is it correlated in any way to how you were raised? So what's really important is that these are aha moments. And these aha moments can happen when you do an exercise like this. But What I want you to promise me is that you're not going to make any judgments. So it's not like, well, my parents always fought about money and now I'm in a relationship and I always am fighting about money. So that must mean I'm not good at this or not a good person. I don't want you to go that extra bit. I just want you to say, oh, I remember my parents arguing about money and that felt really stressful and I didn't really need, I didn't really know what to do as a kid. And I can kind of see how that's present in my life now. So that's as far as I want you to take it because this is all about awareness. It's not about judging yourself. It's not about placing blame. We do that enough in life. Let's not do it here, right? Money is this really powerful concept in most of our lives and it's already full of shame, fear, dread, anxiety, stress, you feel in, fill in any negative word. <laughs> Take your pick there, right? So let's not do that. Let's be a little gentler with ourselves, all right? I'm giving you permission. If you don't give it yourself, I'm giving it to you. A little permission just to kind of walk yourself off the ledge and to be a little bit easy. So the money story is just a great exercise. You can do this on your money day. And I do this a lot. So sometimes I might feel like there's a lot of emotion for me right now around money. It's I, I'm feeling a certain way. Maybe on my money date, I'm going to just spend some time and kind of write out what I'm feeling. And sometimes when I just get it out of my head, I just feel better. I haven't really solved anything. Nothing's really changed, except I just feel a little bit better, right? Another great exercise to do on your money dates is to do gratitude journaling. So There are scientific study after scientific study of the power of writing down the good things that are happening in your life, even if it's the smallest thing. Like maybe you're just really happy about how the sky looked today, or you passed a pretty tree on your drive to work, or maybe you just woke up and you weren't in like a bad mood today, or maybe you went to your favorite restaurant and like they weren't sold out of your favorite beef and broccoli dish, whatever it might be, right? They can be just tiny little things, but what I try to do every week, well, I really try to do this every day, but at least every week, I try to write down like 25 
amazing things that I feel happened to me that week. And again, amazing is the smallest little tiniest thing down to big things. And I don't want you to just focus on big things because again, coming back to money, we can focus on the big things and miss the little things that are really impactful because life is in these little moments. It really isn't in these grand things happening. Those happen so rare, but I think we're just somehow programmed to think that big things happen all the time. You get where I'm going. So that's another thing you could do in your money date, Sherry. So what are you doing in your money date? This is an important point. You're hanging out with your money on your terms. You're putting yourself in control. And I know it can be scary to look at the numbers, but not looking at the numbers doesn't make it any better. And I know this because this used to be me. I used to not look at the numbers. I've shared this on the show before, but I used to be the person that would go to the ATM when the receipt would you know, come out of the machine, I would fold it up in like origami, put it in my wallet, and I just wouldn't look at it again. I just, for some reason, couldn't see numbers. And it wasn't because there wasn't money in the bank account. It was just, I felt all of these emotions. I felt fear and dread and shame and anxiety and stress and all sorts of very irrational things. I just, they're very rational, right? They are rational. I shouldn't say irrational. They're rational, but they're maybe not true necessarily in that moment. But this is the power that money has over us. So in the money date, what I'm doing is I'm trying to diffuse those negative emotions by looking at the numbers. And I promise you, the more you look at the numbers, the easier it's going to get. It doesn't necessarily change the numbers. That That's the work that has to come in the money date and from your day-to-day money. But what it's going to do is it's going to lower the Uh, anxiety level of you. And you're going to feel like, okay, well, that wasn't so bad after all. If I did that once, I can do that again. And then I've done it a couple more times. I can can still do that. And then before you know it, there's going to be a habit formed that every time you set aside time for your money date, you feel weird if you don't do it. That's, That's what we're trying to get to because that's when you're really in control with your money. You're not in control when everything's going great because that's not realistic. You're in control every time you set aside time and you go, you know what? This is important to me. So set the mood. Go somewhere you love or create an atmosphere at home, maybe your favorite drink or snacks, you name it. Just create a space that already diffuses that tension around money. It goes a long way. There's a park that I love near where I live. I like to go sometimes with just like a blanket. Um maybe a little beverage. <laughs> um, not enough that I'm that I'm drunk, just a very, very light beverage, right? Just very, very mild. Um, and usually if I'm going to drink a beverage, I walk to the park. So safety, safety first, right? But I'm just, I feel better in nature. And so I feel like I can deal with my money somehow that way. Second, and all you need is about 20 to 30, 30 minutes tops, unless you want to spend more time. So I like to look at what I spent last week, what's coming up next week, and see if I need to make any tweaks. And the beauty of this is that you can make the tweaks on the fly. So if I noticed that last week, mm, maybe I spent more on eating out than I really had planned to, like, okay, was it was it a week where a friend was in town or I went out with family or... I just felt like treating myself like, okay, no big deal, right? Then I get that mindset around it where I go, okay, yeah, I spent more last week, but I'm okay with it. Or the second option is, ah, I spent more last week and I'm I'm actually not okay with it. So then again, I have a choice. I can make a change in the upcoming week, right? Or not. So by putting yourself in control, by looking at your numbers, you have all of these decision points. And every time you make a decision about your money, you are working your mindset piece. You're telling your mindset that it's okay. It's not so bad. Oh, look what I did. Look how amazing I was this week. Look what goal I just achieved. Look what I just paid off. Look at, you know, all of those things are really impactful. So I set a calendar date because if I don't set a calendar date every week, it's not going to (laughs) happen. So pick a time where you're not tired, where you feel like you can commit to, if it needs to shift around each week, it's not that big of a deal. But 
the whole idea is that you're you're trying to create some sort of consistency here. A couple of other things you can do, you can use this time to create a list of, I love this, 10 things you want to bring in your life with your money in the next six months. So I just did this one, which is why I want to talk about it with you. Maybe you want to cultivate better habits. Maybe there are goals that you have. Um, They're just things that you want to bring into your life with your money in the next six months. Write that stuff down. Get it out of your head. Because when you can get it out of your head, then it's about, okay, we can figure out how to make the money work for that goal. Or at least we can figure out how to get your money positioned in the right way to go towards that goal. And the idea is that you're you're never done with money. It's never like, I had these 10 goals, I achieved these 10 goals, I am now a money success, I never have to look at my money, I never have to think with, about my money. That's not true. That's not the case. It's always going to be a work in progress, but that doesn't mean it has to be work or it has to feel like a chore. It could just mean that, you know, that you're, that you're just, you're working at it, but you're working at it because you really want to work at it because you really want things to change. And that's exciting. That's exciting to me at least. And you also get to choose how you approach this time with your money. So maybe there are certain things you want to do or Maybe you really want to create like a debt payoff system or chart or maybe you want to use this as a visioning time or a time to get on the same page as your partner. Whatever it is, you can use it for different things each week. I change things up, but I'm primarily looking at my spending and my savings and kind of seeing where I'm at. And then if I'm feeling a certain emotion around money, that's the time that I go, okay, Maybe I need to write this out, or maybe I need to do my gratitude list, or maybe I need to do my 10 lists of things I want to bring into my life in the next six months. Like whatever it is, I really want to utilize that time. Another idea to to do, and I've done this many times before, I really like this, give yourself some time to celebrate your success and your achievements. So we don't do this enough with money, but give yourself some time to really think about what you've done really well this year or this month or this week or this day, right? We can get really granular with this, but that keeps you focused on the positive and it's going to make you more eager to keep working on this stuff. So again, my whole point, Sherry, is that we just really in the money dates, we want to create this awareness. We want to feel like we're in control of our money. We want to know where our money's going And more importantly, we want to make sure, yes, it's going to pay our bills, but it's also going towards getting us closer to the things we want to achieve. Buy a house, pay off our debt, travel, start a business, get married, fill in the blank, anything, anything that is a goal. So we want to just make sure that our money is pointed in that direction. I hope that makes sense. So I love this question, Sherry. What a great one as our first Shauna shares question. Money dates, really, really useful. If you've never tried it, give it a try, but give it a try for more than one time, please. Give it a try for like at least a month because it's going to feel a little like, I don't know, I don't want to put a word on it, but it's going to feel a little awkward at first because you're going to kind of be like, what am I doing again? (laughs) And that's okay. That's okay, right? It's just about setting intentional time aside for you to look at your money and to make any changes, quick changes on the fly if you notice something and you want to make a change. Again, if you have a question that you want me to answer, head right over to the show notes. Super easy. You can fill out the questionnaire. Or maybe you want to share a success story with me. I'd love to talk about success stories as well. In the upcoming Shauna Shares episodes, sometimes we'll do one question like we're doing today. Sometimes we'll do a couple of questions in there. So it just kind of depends on the questions and which ones I can group together. But if you want to stay anonymous, that's totally fine with me. Just let me know and I'm more than happy to do so, right? But this community is awesome. You are awesome. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. Thank you for sharing it with your friends. If you haven't done so already, I'm going to challenge you to share your favorite episode of Millennial Money Podcast. Go share it right now with like 10 of your friends. Text them your favorite episode. 
let's get everyone on the right journey with their finances. And I want to bring this community even larger and grow this even bigger so we can just keep doing some really cool things around money. So thank you for being here. Thank you for giving me your time. Thanks for showing up. And I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new episode. Hey, you. Yes, you. Before you go, we want to say thanks for listening to this episode of Millennial Money. For all the links, tags, and ads you've heard on today's episode, check out the show notes or go to mmoneypodcast.com where you'll find more episodes to share with your friends. While you're at it, leave us a review and make sure to subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss out on all the money tips and tricks that will take you from a millennial regular to a millennial money expert. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode.